Hello and welcome Fish here. This video is a little different from the normal videos I do um, and this one we're just going to look at a button box that I've made up for um, my flight sims and I can provide more details if anybody wishes um, I'll provide more details in the description of components and stuff anyway let's have a quick look at it you can see uh, the base is made from 5 mils perspex with a couple of feet on there to keep it off the desk and the uh, uh, button shelf is made from 3 mils and aluminium and the reason I chose aluminium and 3 mils was to facilitate putting on some of the switches because the, the, the thread height on some of those uh, switches are very short and um, and even on the potentiometers so anything thicker than that you would have difficulty in getting parts to suit also aluminium is relatively easy to mill through um, and work with. Uh, the only downside of aluminium is if you, it's very difficult to keep a nice shiny surface because it's quite easy to scratch. I kind of learned that a little bit too late and during the project I ended up putting on some masking tape to help prevent it getting any worse. However once all the buttons are in actually it's not too bad you don't notice it so much. I've also chosen a wedge design, uh, wedge shape and this for two reasons. One is it makes it easier to actually access it rather than rather than actually you know it being flat and further away from you um it could be kind of it could be nearly stood up um to make it more accessible if i wanted to mount it that way but i've given it some kind of a wedge shape and the other reason i chose wedge shape was because um if we look at the electronics at the back uh, the core of the system is a bodner board and a bodner riser board and you see they're, they're mounted left and right there and all the everything flows through those two boards and so um, I needed enough space to be able to um, allow all the wires to flow from there and also to be able to mount them so if it was going to be um, flat it was a, everything was going to have to be very high so it actually gives a nice ergonomic shape to it and it doesn't look like it's taking up too much desk space. I've also left a little section on the left hand side here and the plan is to add in a gear control lever. Um, I haven't really worked out the design in that, there's a couple of designs I've seen on the internet but that's the, that's the plan and I've got some spaces left, some button spaces left on um, from the I.O. board. So let's look at the layout. <clears throat> we can see there's um, four rows of six and I've chosen the top for all the analog stuff or pseudo analog. Um, and you can see I've got different colors um, throughout most of it with the exception of the, the set of buttons at the bottom. And part of the reason for the different um, um, different shapes and colors is because I want to use this with uh, VR and I want to be able to feel my way around this where I have the VR headset on and the combination of the, um, the, the small number six across and four down and also the different shapes will enable me to have it to feel my way and know what switches or what buttons i've had my hands on and you can see the the dials on the top are all different for the same reason so on the top we can see we have a row of six and the two ed edge ones are set up as encoders and this is different from analog uh, switches uh, for those who don't know. Uh, the encoder basically pulses, it's like pressing a button sequentially, you know, um, it's like continuing to press a button. So if I rotate, rotate this to the left, it's like pressing a button continuously, uh, obviously pulsing. And uh, within the Bodner software, uh, the Bodner is the I.O. board, within the Bodner software you can set this up. Um, it uses for each uh, encoder, it uses two button spaces. The four in the center are just normal analog controls and um, these uh, can be used for things like brightness controls and um, knobs on MFCDs in the aircraft um, because I've got HOTAS and my HOTAS has a couple of rotaries so that, that covers that but um, these are additional for, um, for analog control. The next set are a set of six buttons and I've configured them differently. The first two are, are unusual in that they are um, they are toggle buttons, but they're two-way toggle buttons, not three-way. In other words, they don't rest in the center. They're up or down. Now, most toggle switches are just a single switch on, so when you press it up, it's on, and when you press it down, it's off. 
with these these are dual switches so if i press it up one button is on and if i press it down another button is on and this is useful for things like you know gear control for instance uh, it could be used for where you want the gear up or the gear down or a rester hook um or the um the catapult hook for instance if you have these in an up or down position and there's if there's two callbacks for that um in the software you can map one of the, these buttons to the up position and one to the down the next two are i've i've turned them around so that they're toggled left and right and these can be used for instance for for instance in the f18 in dcs it uses toggle switches for the course and the um the hsi the course and the, the heading um and, and dials for the hsi the next two are toggle switches they're standard uh, three position so they're on uh, with one button pressed when it's forward center is neutral not no button press and down is another button pressed so this could work in a similar way to these two over here um uh, however um, I've just put them on as an additional option the next two lines are just simply uh, momentary buttons you can see different types in order for me to be able to feel the difference so that's pretty much um, that's pretty much it uh, if we look underneath you can see uh, some of the wiring there's a lot of wiring involved uh, in in this um, and uh, it, no matter how you slice it or dice it uh, it's going to be tedious particularly on the wiring end um, when everything else is done and I had some issues with the potentiometers that I used um, I got I got a couple of different sets and the first set I, I installed they were they were um, performing badly they were not calibrating properly so I had to replace them but um, all is working as I expected now so let's have just a quick look at the screen and we'll see how uh, the actions work on the screen as I'm rotating and moving through these so you can see um, we can see we have already we've got two buttons pressed and they're the two buttons that I spoke about on the um, on the second line and we can see they're either in one position or another so we can see that is 17 or 18 and the other one is 9 or 10. The, the encoders and we just see how they work um, if I rotate up the left encoder now if I rotate it left we can see it's it clicks through button 21. So as I'm rotating it left continuously, it's continuously pulse 21. Now if I rotate it right, you can see it's pulsing button 22. So you can see, you'll, you can map the, the rotation in one direction to one rotation to the clockwise, and you can map a button to the other rotation anti-clockwise. And the other encoder works exactly the same, 19 and 20. The rotaries, you can see, nice and smooth and no particular sequence there i just wired them up in the position that was close to me so i didn't worry too much about the sequence of the buttons and so on and the rest of it is just the uh, the buttons as you saw um we have the left right button these are momentary left and right we have the toggle between the three-way toggles and finally we have just the individual momentary buttons this is the last couple of lines for individual ones so that's pretty much it um, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a, a like and uh, until the next time thanks for watching